How are they? So you'll be able to pull them all up from YouTube. Um, on the YouTube website. That's what that little guy is. But oh, there was a limited time on them. Are you sure? Last year, I think it was two months, and then they were all deleted. So don't press me don't like press I did. Be careful. Ah, I sat in that chair and it's wiggling. Like, as soon as it, it feels, I don't. I didn't trust it. I would do it and screencast it. As a but <laughs> see, it felt dishonest. Um, um, it crossed okay. my mind. It was public times. at one Sit point. Sit in the hot tub of Hershey. <laughs> Sit in the hot tub of Hershey. It's always the headphones yeah. on. Uh, exactly. Or like, you. I'm stuck at the registration desk later today. I'm watching the live feed. <laughs> the couple oh, yeah. that I wanted, I'm like, no one's going to be Are there. It's any, late Tuesday. If you did, um, it would just be audio, though, but like audio and video, would you, I guess you need permission from the presenter. That, that they sign off on. You there's only there's a couple that your soul is owned. You come over. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple that you can if you wanted to you can say you know no video no audio and they won't record. I will say this: there was one session that I attended yesterday it was probably the most inappropriate session I've ever attended. <laughs> I hope he doesn't get it. No, I'm very kind. I'm a kind audience member. <laughs> oh, it was I'm the super uh, it was the why did you come? It was just him saying a complaining and insulting the administration oh and other teachers. And just, just, I, I yeah. felt bad about that name as well. I, I was like, no, 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 but I went in thinking it was satirical. Yeah. And I yes. sat down and it wasn't. And I felt bad because his presentation, the technology for the wasn't working. So I said, oh, I'll sit, I'll see if we get to a point, you know, maybe the poor guy, like, you know, things aren't working, I'm going to hang in there for him. But I think yeah. that's the first thing I've ever so walked out of. Well, I think he probably p pitched more than it ended up being. I felt like I was listening to an angry NPR broadcast, to be honest. Like that's very like, uh, that's strange because there the was a review board, so how? Maybe the way he pitched it, because until you actually execute, they have no way of knowing how you're going to execute. Well, and was it a so, was it a uh, here's my presentation? It was here's, now, my, here's my real presentation. No, uh, 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 now that I'm in, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, 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 it was very much opinion instead of, and no, no offerings for solutions, only, uh... Just complaining about it. Well, yeah. That's, that's what I would do. So, are you, we have one minute to go, right? Yes. Are you going to say, ready, set, go, or <laughs> should I do that? No, I got a whole spiel, a legal spiel that oh. PNC makes me say so they don't get sued. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Why we have to say it. Suing is bad. Do you have any jokes to work in at this point? I have to bring it no. for a couple days. I just do my content teacher. Okay, welcome to Geospatial Inquiry. Uh, before we begin, please turn your cell phones off. Fire regulations require that all session attendees have a chair. There is no standing in aisles or sitting on the floor. <coughs> Please do not use chairs for your belongings if others are looking for a place to sit. If you are plugging devices into wall outlets, keep in mind people may be moving around during the session and your devices may be damaged. If someone runs into it. Act 48 will still be available at PNC as we have offered in the past. However, no codes will be distributed this year. You will be able to submit your Act 48 credit online via the evaluation process. You can find the links in the Attendee Service Center on the PNC webpage. And now I present to you, Junior. Hello, good morning. Uh, the camera is red. Is this a bad sign or not? It's not good. The camera is red. It's is good. It? It's good? Yeah. Okay, they really do everything. Okay, right. you know, it, it was blue, so that's why. Yeah. No. So, hello, good morning again. My name is uh, Junior, Robson Junior. I am a, a second year doctor student at College of Education at Lehigh. And uh, this is one of the research uh, groups that I am part of. Uh, Dr. Alec Bodzin is my advisor, and he's the uh, principal investigator of this uh, grant. Uh, so, the project is about SASE. We're going to be learning what SASE is. And, uh, but the main idea is like we are striving to integrate curriculum uh, and developing ge uh, with geospatial thinking. At the same time, we develop other like 21st century skills, especially this, in this case, civics, because we need people and the students to get more engaged with the community, 
any of it, and then become really whole adults and committed to the place where they live so they can make a change in the future. So, what is SESI? Uh, I have a short video because uh, this is a grant uh, founded by the NSF, so we have, we have to make like showcase. There is a uh, virtual showcase on their website every year, so everybody can get to know what uh, NSF has been funding. And this is one of uh, this is our video that we made last year uh, on Learning YouTube. And after you uh, take a look, you have a broader uh, comprehension of the entire scope of the project. And then I'll get to the specifics. Uh, by the way, the presentation uh, this presentation is available in our, our website as well as all the curriculum. Uh, we are like towards the end of the third year of implementation. So we have reviewed, we have designed, reviewed with the teachers, and it was like three years working together to have this uh, final product. And it's paying off like in ways that we haven't even imagined that would be happening. And I'll be talking about that uh, as well today. So our website is eli.lehigh.edu. I'm gonna walk you guys through the website very quick. So we have all other curricula that Dr. Bodzin and his research groups from like 20 years from now start doing. But ours, SESI, is uh, right here. So we have energy curricula, tectonics, climate change, land use, and SESI. Once you get there, you have access to like overview, instructional framework, which is like the uh, proposal of the integrated curricula, and a lot with a standards alignment and uh, best practices. Uh, it's aligned with uh, NGSS, so it is very cool. Uh, I'm going to be showing to you guys as well through the presentation. Uh, so this is the first page. We have uh, this introductory video that I'm going to be showing. And you also can get to have the presentation right after I, s I finish here on your publications, research. You can also get to see other presentations and other papers that were presented uh, from these three years. So here, presentations at national, international, and regional meetings, which is our case. We have the b uh, presentation about geospatial inquiry and civic build-up with SESI integrating curriculum with geospatial technologies. Okay, so I'm gonna play real quick this uh, video. If you have any questions right after the video finishes, you can make them, no problem. We can tackle on the go, and then I, I keep on with the presentation. Tech, I need sound. the real world in the form of dynamic maps that aren't the old 
fold it and put together kind, but something that really helps them get out of the classroom system into the world and place what they're doing in context. And what we're doing is we're looking at what's around us and we're making observation. I enjoy being able to do things um, and use technology how I wanted to use it and how it was meant to be used. I didn't realize there was a class for zoning and me, but once I'm, I'm learning a lot from this class at this point, all the kids and helping them learn what the different residential districts are or industrial districts or commercial districts are and hoping for some ideas from them about what, what they want town and town to be like for them in the future. Because they're young and so they'll be there in town. We're just trying to find out what they want for this city to be for them. Some of the challenges for recruiting mentors at first can be difficult to know who to talk to when you're recruiting members at a company. Second, mentors who work on a more hourly basis have very little control over their work time, so it can be difficult for them to come out and mentor in the schools. Third, many employers are comfortable with their people going out and doing one and done mentoring experiences. However, our model is for a more recurrent method of mentoring. I think they're very interested in how we get to learn about our outside world and how the ecosystem system works and the training environment and stuff like that. I like it because it's better than just like normal white paper stuff. You can go on the computer that we can do areas on there. And then also we have like people from college coming in, helping us out. But what we're working out is the patterns of curriculum and instruction that will make a very powerful, locally grounded geospatial curriculum available uh, for a wide variety of schools uh, for teachers at a range of technological mobility levels for students from all walks of life. So this is an overview of our uh, three-year work. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Allentown School District because they have embraced uh, us as like researchers that try to innovate and improve techniques and curricula for uh, K-12. Uh, I'd like also to thank people at Building 21, the staff, the students, they are amazing. And like, I'm from Brazil, and the minute I got here, I was able to become a mentor as a, like, a volunteer. Uh, and I get the chills just to remember that place is magical. And we are finishing our first uh, graduation this year because Building 21 is a rather new school. They uh, just created that uh, four years ago, and then they like, it's very beautiful, and I'm very like grateful to be part of this story now. So, another thing that it's very interesting is like, since it's uh, research, educational research implementation, we want people to share and be engaged and ask and get together, and you know, so we can think about better and better ways to help uh, students learn and uh, teachers teach with uh, technology in classrooms as well like school staff uh, and using these technologies um, so again why do i come back to the presentation if you have questions don't hesitate to you know interrupt raise your hand or anything i have two questions for you and i hope by the end of the presentation you guys will be able to uh, give the same answer or an improved version of the answer. Uh, so the question is when does a city become an urban heat island? Have you ever heard about this term urban heat island? And then uh, how is tree coverage and crime related? This one is my favorite. Have you ever thought about the relationship between trees in a city and the rates of crime? I, I am going to be very honest with you guys. The very first time I heard that when I was like coming up with my explanation was, okay, so if we have more trees, people can hide behind them or whatever. I found out that that wasn't true. So I'm already helping like, you guys to build up your answers. This is not part of the answer. Uh, so. SASI stands for Social Environmental Science Investigations. So this is an uh, integrated so social studies and science curricula. It really happens 100% integrated and it's beautiful. Uh, it is based on inquiry based uh, kind of uh, model. It's also made map based because we use maps uh, for instruction, for data collection, 
and also for students architects so they produce and they like they reason about their arguments they build their arguments by using and creating maps uh, and then after we do this data collection phase and instructional phase they come back uh, to the classroom uh, and do analysis with ArcGIS which is the like one of the most common and free for education web GIS programs uh, and okay one minute I have we have to also been focusing on local issues like community related uh, aspects so we help students get engaged take a look at their city at their local uh, the place of living with different eyes and want to be engaged want to become engaged in making a better change for that place or for the population so this is the framework of uh, geospatial thinking and reasoning that was used for this curriculum uh, dr bodin uh, and his team had uh, developed it before i came along because I, i'm the baby i last one to come along. Uh, so we have this uh, movement. We start with a driving investigative question, like just like I asked, what is the relationship between tree coverage and the crime in the city? Have we ever thought about that? Or just like, when does a, a city become an island? So you make this kind of question to kids and like, it's bizarre. So you start like stimulating these question marks popping out of their heads all the time. And then the process starts. We visualize data with the help of the GIS technology, ArcGIS. Then we go out and we collect data with the collector app. I'm going to be talking about them very quick. And then they come back with us and they start putting pieces together and make the case. So about our school, it's an urban public high, high school. Uh, we have worked in the beginning with two teachers, then secondly with four teachers. And now there are two new teachers, so the curriculum has been fireproof tested because we never could expect that there would be a, a rotation. Ninth grades, all the students are economically disadvantaged. Two thirds are Hispanic or Latino, 20% ULLs, and 19% have IEPs. However, this is very interesting about uh, building 21 because, let me go back. All of them are together. There's no difference or there's no segregation in terms of accessibility or learning needs. So every teacher and every class, all the students are there. So it's very challenging for us, but it's what we want eventually to be able to do, to be teaching regardless of whatever. We, we do have help uh, from the specialists. Uh, we have nurses, we have special ed, professionals uh, that come along and they talk to us it's very open we communicate uh, and things have been working our biggest challenge was the disengagement of students because teenagers like they they are very unengaged uh, we are like educational field as a whole is investigating and trying to come up with ideas and ways of you know delivering in a more motivating way or in a way that they don't lose flow or they get there in flow mode. Uh, let's see. The technology school is a one-on-one -on -one environment thanks to Allentown School District because they provide uh, laptops. Our grant has also bought 30 iPads so they can um, go out and make the data collection. These iPads only have GPS, they don't have Wi-Fi. So they cannot be using internet outside school or like being distracted. Uh, we also have bought uh, 30 infrared thermo thermometers because there is an investigation that we're gonna be talking about. They have to measure temperatures from different ground surfaces. And something that I think essential, like in terms of technology, I don't know it's because I'm becoming old. Uh, I, 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 I don't know how to use touchpad and I'm using a touchpad here. So that's why I'm struggling with these slides. So we also have provided them a couple, like a uh, pack of mice so they can have this uh, option of like, oh, I really need a mouse to work better or no, no, I don't care with the touchpad. So this, although we may, Junior, this is, what does this have anything to do with what you're talking about? We are talking about education and we do this for them. 
sometimes we forget about it because we get excited with our ideas, we love our jobs and stuff, but we have to think about them. We have to be careful and like thoughtful about every aspect of the process because, a, you know, a drop of water that falls on the, the glass, it can disengage the student, oh, I don't want to do anything anymore. So having this is great, especially because of the mechanics. We have to zoom in, zoom out the maps. We have to drag, drop. We have to draw polygons. We have to click like with the right button to have all, uh, extra options. So doing this here on the touchpad for me is a huge challenge. So I'm always the one, does anyone need an extra mouse? So mouse is also part of the technology available. Uh, today we're going to be talking about two uh, of these investigations from the curricula, which are FISANET Ecological Services, which is TES for short, and Urban Heat Islands. Uh, the other investigations are here, and we also have some culminating projects if you desire uh, like to work with the entire SASE curriculum, either like in a semester or on an entire school year, it's totally possible you can uh, mix with your base instruction or you can have only SASE as the whole uh, product for you to, to work in the, the, uh, throughout the year. We have been, uh, so we have been like working this different kind of contests because the school sometimes have changes that we cannot anticipate and then we adapt, but it's great also because we are testing and learning and you know, preparing the material for all kinds of schools and units. So, this is the beginning of the first investigation, TES, TES in, in Ecological Services. Uh, here we have in green the uh, areas around the school building that uh, the, we, we go out with the teachers and the students. And you can see that this is the school, it's in the middle, and all the maps are prepared beforehand and in ArcGIS, and then the teacher can select specific places to go with students in different days or different classes. And each of these classes collect a, uh, a set of data points, and then during the collect data collection analysis, we can use all classes data, and then you have a huge data set. It's very cool. This interface is from the mobile uh, app, collector app, and this is what students have in their uh, iPad, or if they like, they have, uh, they are using a cell phone, a smartphone for a, like uh, something happened during the day, your technology is not working. We can come up with an alternative using our own or their own devices to download collector app and do things. I need to stop this because I'm still talking. Okay, whatever. So. They have to identify the kinds of trees that they are seeing. They also have to select here the genus and species. They have, like, this is the content back, uh, background content knowledge that they get with the teachers in classroom in the first day. Uh, then they tell us if this tree is native or exotic, and they learn about that so they can plan better uh, which kind of trees are they going to be selecting for planting their houses, like in the future or understanding why these trees are selected and why, why they were put in certain places by the city. Uh, also, they have to measure the height of the trees and the circumference of the trunk. Then, the circumference, they, they have these uh, measure tapes to, you know, to measure the trunk, but the height is something very cool because when, uh, and we do not tell them, we just tell them like the mentors and the teachers tell them when they are outside. How are they gonna measure the height of a tree? It's, there's no way, like, until now that we are developing critical thinking and you know, problem solving skills. We teach them how to use estimation. Like, all the trees, they, they, they can be compared to other structures. And then we bring about the concepts of like, a story has a certain kind of height, like in Brazil it's about three meters. I don't know the English system yet. So uh, we can say, how, how many stories do you see in this apartment building? And then they, you know, you make this uh, simulating questions and then they start thinking and then 
they start observing the, the elements in the environment in a different way. Uh, we also can uh, use ourselves or themselves like, oh, how, how tall are you? So get close to the tree. And then how many of you do you think this tree is like? And then they estimate. It doesn't need to be a perfect to the point measure. You just have to ask them to make an estimation so they can collect data. Especially because it's just one point amongst a thousand points from other students and then they'll be able to, you know, uh, filter the data, see the, the what are the outliers, what is the common by uh, value, the, the standard deviation stuff. Uh, so that's very cool. They also have to take uh, photos. You see here, uh, the app has this photo uh, functional built in. Why? Because we teach them about making observations, like see the scientific method. They are taking lots of data and uh, being in the field, but when they are analyzing again, if they need to you know, revisit that thing that they observed, how are they gonna prove that? So the picture is there for that. They take the picture and then they can see. Uh, another thing is like, they also have the chance to make notes or observations about anything that unusual that's going on that you'd like to share. We also provide them with an iBook, which is uh, pre-installed in the iPad. Uh, this is a dichotomous key uh, tree book because we have uh, all the trees uh, that are around the building property uh, cataloged here in this uh, iPad iBook so they can be clicking and navigating according to the, invest, uh, the analysis they are doing. Like first, they select a tree and then uh, does this tree have leaves or needles? So they say, okay, it's a, it's a leaf. And then they click here, and then the, the page turns automatically. Then there is another question that will be guiding their analysis until they get to the last one, which is, uh, which you hopefully is gonna be the tree they're observing. And then it gives the scientific name and the common name. If it's not, we tell them that there's no problem, they can go back like there's a back button and they can see another step that maybe they were like uncertain and then if they change another, the other option, it's gonna be leading them to the other uh, track and then eventually they get uh, the answer. This is uh, totally responsive. You can click on the picture and it's gonna be enlarged. You can zoom in and zoom out by pinching. Sometimes you have multiple pictures like to show the outline, to show the stem, to show uh, you know black and white uh, version, so we try to make it as more illustrative as possible, so they can be prepared to make a full and complete observation. So this is an example of like after some classes went out in the field and collect data, all the data points they have different colors according to the uh, type of tree. We can select as the uh, managers features. Uh, the color, the kind of uh, symbol that the data point is going to be, and then to facilitate that analysis afterwards. Uh, the fun thing and the good thing that after you are in school, like using your laptop, uh, you can click in each one of them, and this pop-up window will show up, showing the exact observation that the student made. Uh, also, we have the attachment, so. It doesn't matter if it was one or 10 pictures, it's gonna be there. So the entire work the student collected is gonna be there forever. Not only for him, but for his class and for the entire you know, ninth grade uh, to be using. So these are other photos. This is one student, example of a student photo. He took a photo of this tree. And the other one is a photo with like one of our mentors uh, in the mentoring process in data collection. So these are some questions that uh, happen during the data analysis days. Uh, we ask them uh, to revisit their data with ArcGIS open in their laptops and look for these answers from their uh, observations data set. So they have to click and find the answers. Here is a uh, layout uh, of ArcGIS. As you can see here, we are using a laptop. Uh, this left uh, 
panel or blade, we have all the layers that are overlaid onto the original map. So here, for instance, uh, we have Allentown City Trees. It's activated. This layer shows these trees here from Allentown. And this layer was not created by us. This layer was directly imported from Allentown City uh, data set from GIS specialists because it is connected and, and it's also available in Esri's data, uh, you know, cloud. We can have access to thousands of millions of data sets and layers from the entire planet because this is what this entire, uh, this Esri educational GIS uh, technologies are for. Uh, let me see another thing. Filters. Uh, when we see this, you know, it's kind of overwhelming. Oh, what am I going to be doing here? So many colorful data points. But we can, we teach the students to use all these uh, tools for analysis. And one of them is this one right, right here. Like, in this case, we are opening, like collapsing the, the second uh, block. So it's the second class. Uh, their observation. So I want to see just the second class observation so I can hover the mouse and then this is going to be collapsed. And if I click here on this funnel icon, uh, the filter option, oh my, <laughs> the filter option is going to be showing and then you can filter uh, according to many variables. You can filter by creator, so like I want to see only my uh, observation. So you go there, filter by user junior and then everything is going to disappear but my observations. I can filter by my class. I can say filter by class and then just my class observation is going to show up. I can also filter by specific groups of students or colleagues if it's, that's the case to help you with your argument building or in, uh, analysis. Uh, and that's very like empowering for them because there is no right answer. It's up to them to be messing around and clicking and you know activating layers and discovering everything. We also uh, guide them to start with the, the analysis individually so they get to know how to do it and then we go to a broader perspective so they can make comparisons across their classmates and then across all classes like after a week of data collection. And then we ask them about patterns, about like the group of trees that show up more and about the heights of these trees and why is there that there are like shorter trees in a certain place and longer and like bulker, uh, bulkier trees in other places and we just make the questions because it's inquiry based and we kind of hope and guide them to be giving out answers. This is one of the tables that we have in the data analysis uh, material which is available for everybody. Uh, and here we are so showing them the value that nature and especially trees uh, offer to society. And like in the end of the, the, the day, it's a lot of money. So not only we know about the benefits and we talk about the benefits that we grew up knowing and observing, but then we get to teach them with sassy that trees and like the environment is not just utterly important. It's much more than that. Like it's interconnected with social spheres, political spheres, administrative spheres, your life, my life, everybody, li everybody lives. So that's why we have this like thread of civic build up. With this kind of investigations and work throughout the days, we 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 start like instilling that like, oh, I didn't know about that. So, and then we see the change starting to happen. This is another example of layer. This is the tree canopy layer coverage. And then we have the legend option here. All the layers, you can have the legend and see what they mean. Like we have the deciduous trees, which are the trees with leaves, and the evergreen ones, the ones with needles that never die uh, and during winter. Uh, we also have the outlines showing the areas for that uh, certain investigation. And here, there's like a color scale with the numbers, interval numbers showing you uh, how much coverage there is in that area and like for very little to a lot. 
The good thing about that, you can click in each one of these irregular polygons and another pop-up will show up giving you the information from the city or like uh, EPA or anything or any governmental uh, entity that you have imported the data set from. This one is about the personal and property crime layer. So you are seeing the crime index. This is the personal crime index. So the red area shows that there are many reports of personal crime going like in the center city of Ellen, central area of Ellenthal. And as it goes like further towards the suburbs, it goes lower and lower and lower. Another thing, they can click in each ward or each uh, census box and investigate these numbers. There's like murder index, personal crime index, robbery index, burglary, larceny, motor vehicle theft. There's every kind of very specific detail. So the options for them to, to select a topic to investigate is almost endless. Now we are overlaying these two uh, layers. We are overlaying the three canopy, three canopy uh, layer plus the property crime. And then they can start visualizing the relationship between one kind of data set and information and the other one and say, hmm, is, is there something going on here? And then they will see like here, if they click here in this area, they will see that it's very likely that nothing happens there because it's green and it's not red and this kind of thought should be guiding them or happening in class. If it's not, us as mentors or the teachers can all and should always be, you know, uh, circulating and showing them and asking questions to help them get there. This is an example of the data that it's that can be collected from the census blocks like we have areas, and in each area there is an irregular polygon uh, according to the uh, census blocks. So we get like, this is this information was from the previous one. I, I don't know, if, I guess it was from 2010 or 2011, uh, but it's usually the most updated because areas as we is interconnected and then it's always being updated. Um, more qu data question analysis. I don't know about my time, I'm gonna be a little bit more. This is good. We have another uh, table for data analysis that happens. And here, if you see the question is complete the class table below, you need the data from the other groups in class. So it's not only your group. You have to check the other groups. So oh, I, do I have to have the students walk around and like it's gonna be a mess? No, just remind them that they can filter the results of all data sets by the other groups. And then they're gonna be just seeing the data from specific groups and then they're gonna be able to fill up the data. Also, there's another way, actually there are multiple ways that even we don't know yet because it's very cool how technology allows you and empowers you to do stuff. You can just click on the, like, on the areas that I show and be collecting the data on the go and organizing whatever fits you better or helps you understand the data that you're dealing with. So you can put here and organize the data. Then, this, I highlighted this for us in this presentation. We can see that the difference between uh, area one and area five is that the index of proper crime is all, more than double of the average in the US. And the percent we cannot be covered in Allentown, which the average is 30% for each area, is 17%, so it's almost less than half uh, of the average. And here, on the other hand, we have the extreme opposite. In an area, area five, that only has 25.3 crime, uh, property crime index, you can see how high the three coverage is. So by having this data, we can, and comparing and organizing them in tables and drawing graphs, we can get to, you know, uh, have these findings and we teach them how important it is to be building an argument based on data. So 
you, you can always articulate an uh, argument for, uh, for your point. So this is the other investigation I'm going to be talking about, UHI, Urban Myth Highlands. The yellow uh, areas now, it's the data, data gathering areas, and these mini thermometers are the data sets from like the first year. We have updated them already. This is uh, the exact thermometer that we give them to use, and they are outside collecting data with their uh, iPads. Here is a little bit different, the layout, the interface, but it's the mechanics is the same. You open, uh, you click on a place, like, I'm sorry, you click on the plus sign wherever you are because you are being tracked by GPS. So let's imagine that I'm here on, in the middle of parking lot 17. So there is gonna be a blue spot here, which is the GPS, just like we see in Google Maps you know, when we're driving. And then if I click plus, this blade is gonna pop up and then you can start making the observation. This is after the data collection has happened and like, poof, lots of information made by students. We didn't make any of this, it was just the students. So uh, we have here scale of color, the, this is a snapshot. But if we were in ArcGIS, we could be opening the content or details blade and seeing what the colors stand for in the legend uh, scale. So the redder it is, like the more red it is, the higher temperatures, and the lighter or yellowish it is, cooler temperatures. Uh, this observation, uh, this investigation, attempts to be uh, showing the students how uh, temperature is absorbed differently by different ground surfaces. And uh, they, like, even though it's just like small areas, like these ones, for instance, they can like make an observation or take a, a temperature reading from the, gla the grass with the sun, like heating the grass, and also a, gra a piece of grass that is under the shade. So they're gonna see that the temperature varies somehow. Uh, and that's why also the picture taking is important here because when they are back in class, they can articulate and show why, like, oh, but you take a, you took two observations from the very same spot. And then the student can say, hey, take a look at these two pictures that I took. This one, I was reading the unshaded patch of grass, and this one was the shaded patch of grass. And then that's why temperature is like this and that. So that's very cool. We also have uh, kinds of um, surface, if it's dry, wet, or, you know, lots of different things. We ask them about the surface type, which if it's grass, if it's light asphalt, dark asphalt, if it's dirt, uh, if it's another one like metal, because we have some uh, metal things going on uh, from the city structure, uh, and also the air temperature count. So we teach them uh, how to be asking like the personal assistants, because they have cell phones. So say, hey, have you used Ask Google or Siri to ask them about the temperature? because we need this, so how are you gonna be measuring the temperature? You cannot just like shoot the air because these temp uh, thermometers, doesn't, they don't work like that. They just measure surface temperature. And then they say, I don't know, Mr. House. Hey, let's get our cell phones and say, okay, Google, or hey, Siri. And then it's impressive. They, lots of them haven't done that yet. So why haven't we taught them these abilities? So these are some kind of skills that are super duper important for us as adults. So why aren't them using as well to make their lives better? So this is very cool and it, it like popped up uh, during one of the data collection days and it's very interesting to be shared because it's like parts of lesson learned. So again, we also have the analysis, like you can click on the spots, see the data from the students, see the pictures, it is, it's the same mechanism. So you don't have to be learning different technology to be able to run different uh, investigations. This is uh, the interface from uh, ArcGIS. Here you have the graded scaling colors to understand how the temperature varies. Uh, this is another layer, which is the city surface uh, layer. Let me see, land cover. So land cover layer. We can see that the blue ones are water. 
and then the red ones are build structure. So that we can see where the buildings are. Gray is other impervious surface like sidewalks, roads and stuff. Water is not going to be absorbed. Uh, we also have the dark green which is tree canopy. So we can see where the trees are and low vegetation. So grass, shrubs and stuff. Then they can activate this layer just like it is now. It's activated and on top of that we have their own observations. So they can start cross comparing the visual information to see if there's any kind of relationship. We also provide a questionnaire for data, uh, you know, driven battery of questions for them to run their analysis. And it starts from like a very focused kind of question and starts broadening up so they can start inferring or transferring or making analogies. And we usually put a challenge question towards the end of this handout because some students they like they enjoy so much that they rush through the end do everything beautifully but they still deserve to be working and learning more so we provide a challenge question so they can further their reasoning and trying to use more geospatial reasoning and skills and use more uh, functions of ArcGIS that are not like shared during class because it's kind of advanced and techy. So there is space for students who are you know, doing better than most of the other ones. So we can have everybody working and learning together. <clears throat> so this is uh, gonna be part of the uh, students' artifacts. Uh, like the blue outline, we show that we select some areas in the whole city after they did the investigations, after they learned how to use the programs. Now we use the very program to you know, give tasks and assignments and projects. So we have lots of areas and then they can uh, use all the layers from many classes or only their classes and uh, we start doing the, the exercise. So in this case, uh, we zoomed in in three kinds of different zones or area for this kind of test. We have like a suburb area here. Here we have a very uh, commercial business uh, area. And here is downtown, so center city. Here there is lots of uh, buildings and things going on. And then each group of students receive three of them. So they can, they can be working in uh, each of them and see the differences and the patterns and stuff. More questions. Now we are guiding the students to be comparing these areas that they were assigned. And uh, after they understand and see the difference between temperatures or you know, structure, build environment, uh, or nature environment, we ask them, if you could change something to improve, what would you do? And like, the first question, without altering land use, because like, oh, let's make a park out of this. Yeah, but now this, sometimes making a park is not always possible because there is this zoning from the city officials. And then just like this happening, I read yesterday, uh, Martin Stower is like starting to be planned to be demolished. And then there's a whole discussion about, uh, in Bethlehem, there's a whole discussion about the zoning that is uh, assigned to that area. So after the, the, the building that is unused for years, what is gonna be you know, built there? What is gonna be made out, out of that area? It's not just an, oh, let's make a park. No, there's like the government, administration, everything is involved. And this uh, SASE curricula helps us have our students developing this kind of thinking. And oh, I haven't thought about that. And then we allow them, if you could, now be creative. What would you do? What, how would you make your city better? Uh, we ask them also to take like notes uh, of the, and like estimates of how much land cover um, of three ha we have or structures or impervious surfaces so they can see how the areas that they were assigned differ and then they can uh, 
make inferences and start connecting the dots. Now I'm gonna show you uh, two students, students artifacts from this investigation, Oregon Heath Islands, and we asked them to uh, draw and make a map in ArcGIS and propose and also articulate because sometimes they say, I just want to have this. But they don't explain why or what they were thinking and who is gonna be benefited out of that. And then we ask them to propose and articulate and you know, draw and edit the maps. Oops, oops, oops. This is the first one. So this student has added like the regular polygon here is tree canopy, so they will be adding more tree coverage here. Here, these irregular polygons are green roofs, which is very interesting that some students came up with this idea of, oh, we have so many like red areas, why can't we just make them a little bit more, you know, environmentally friendly? And then they, they, they go to Google and they search and they come up with these ideas and then the idea, oh, I found something, and then they share and everybody gets to learn together, it's amazing. Uh, and the pink lines, they were uh, proposing to put more tree along the sidewalk, so there will be shade and then the temperatures will be uh, lowering uh, in the tree. This one is like a very colorful one, but still the student did his observation, her observation using this base layer uh, of the land cover, and you can see the blue line here is one of the areas that they were assigned. And again, this student uh, added green roof with purple. You can see that the purple polygon is right over the blue, uh, the red structure. Uh, pink, they uh, proposed to painting the roofs or making roofs instead of using dark and black uh, elements or material using wider or like lighter ones so it would, wouldn't absorb so much heat. And the yellow thing, I found this very interesting because we usually see the asphalts are just like dark asphalt, dark asphalt, dark asphalt. And they say, hey, let's change the, the, the street color to a lighter asphalt. Oh, that may work. So it's very cool. Here, I, I would like you to tell me, because I'm talking about I need a drink of water, what kind of peculiarities do you see across these two student samples? Like, imagine, we are trying to uh, foster, I'm sorry, we are trying to foster critical thinking, we are trying to foster, uh, give student agency, we are trying to build up civics uh, uh, behavior, we are trying to raise environmental awareness. There are so many things being worked, but now it's the time they did that. Us as teachers and educators, what what kind of things could you tell me that maybe I haven't seen yet? Again, there's no right or wrong. Are they coming up with the solutions um, like for instance green roofs? Are is that part of the curriculum or is that kind of a outside they came up with the solution on their own? The green roofs? Yeah. Outside. Okay. They it wasn't uh, planned to be unless one of the teachers doing instruction mentioned that and then they, they kept in their minds, but it, that in our uh, there's no specific instruction. That's why I, I select this one, it's very cool. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe proximity to natural versus man-made resources, because they see that they're near the park. Yes. And maybe uh, how that affects, you know, usage of, you know, other systems. The proximity of that. This, on the other hand, is planned in our curriculum. <laughs> That's great. We really want them to see how the city is currently organized and understand these relationships between built environment and that nature and like elements so they can like why and then they have an answer or they build up an answer uh, also because on other investigations like especially in the projects they have to do everything by themselves it's like and then it becomes project project based, based learning like we have like in case of Allentown there is like the 30 years 
proposal for sustainability and smart growth. So it's, now that you know everything, like it's up to you. How would you make your city better? Or like, how would you make your neighborhood better? And then they have to come up and analyze. I get the chills, it's so, and I'm not even a science teacher. I, I used to be an English teacher in Brazil, but it's beautiful and fantastic when we see our students evolving and learning and growing. And this is not just like, oh, I'm reading a book and I'm gonna memorize something. They, you know, develop these skills and they're gonna be very likely transferring them to their own lives. They're gonna be walking in the park or, you know, playing sports with their colleagues and something happens, they go, oh, explain why that happens or why there are so many trees along the rivers. Or, you know, that's beautiful, I love that. And yes. At any point, do they share this information with community groups, like maybe the zoning board or the borough council, city council, or something like that? He just read my mind. I'm gonna show that, and you're, it's beautiful. Everything that we are doing in Building 20, because Building 20 is open, like, and embrace the whole community and the city. This kind of work, I don't know if you remember about the first video, uh, the introductory video, we have mentors. But these mentors are not just like college students. We invite uh, city officials to be there and share their work and see what the students are doing to work the STEM career and awareness, knowledge and interest. So uh, one of the, the interviewees was uh, Mr. Toth. He is the city zone, uh, Allentown city zoning officer. It's, it's crazy when he goes there, he shares so many things and he tells the kids like, what you're doing here, you already can work with me. And then the kids like, it opens a whole level of possibilities. And it's just not Mr. Todd. We have many other uh, professionals from different areas that are related to our curriculum. And then the, just like we had a, a, a one day as a mentor, a photographer, like she was a video, she's a videographer. And then there are students that are more arts inclined, but we were uh, having this videographer work with us in order to take the photos and make the observations, like for our work to be like, have professional uh, data, visual data. And then she could be also engaging and asking uh, and answering questions from the students. So the whole community is always invited. This was an amazing question and I'm gonna be showing some results of that. So something that I have, uh, any other question? No, so something that I would like to share is like the freedom. This student chose this uh, base layer, the imagery satellite layer to be doing the analysis. Whereas the other one chose the crazy and use lots of colorful things going on, but still delivered a very similar thing. So the objectives, the learning goals were met in a very exemplar way, but the thinking, the reasoning was totally personal, which is amazing. Uh, okay, I'm towards the end, five minutes, very, oh, this is just like the project. I have some pictures from students. They are showcasing their uh, work in school. And this is answering a question. This was one day that we ran uh, in 2018 last year. We invited city officials and uh, some um, board members from Allentown a School District to uh, judge the three planning proposal presentation, the, the, this kind of project. And there were like, I think 10 students that were selected from all the classes and they prepared a better version of the presentation because they were submitting their three planning proposal, which this case was planning trees in their school because uh, Building 21 doesn't have m uh, much going on in terms of trees because it, it wasn't a school uh, or government area. It was a commercial zoning back in the day and that building used to be a bank and I, I, don't, I don't remember. So it was not a school and it became a school now, just like I said, four years ago. So uh, here, we have another student presenting in this uh, tree proposal. The fun thing that we got to, to know, like as a feedback from the community and the city, the, the winning proposal uh, would be implemented and it has been selected and is underway 
to be planted. This is the this is a slide that I put together with the student whole uh, you know reasoning to be making her uh, proposal. First, that is very scaffolded, like we give them a, a planning document step by step so they can be following the steps. They have to identify two areas they would like to plant trees, and then they have to select two species uh, and explain why. Uh, they also have to select an area that they wouldn't want to use and explain why. Uh, also, select, tell us about the species they have kind of considered but dropped the idea because of <coughs> any kind of factor. These factors that I'm not sharing is like building the curriculum, you can see when you download it. Uh, but they analyze like root, root uh, system, how it grows, uh, uh, trunk, how high it gets, how thick it gets, uh, the, the consequences of nature, like if we plant stuff, is it gonna interact with the built environment? So something that you're trying to propose to be good, is it gonna be good, really good, or is it gonna cause problems for the city? So we also raise this kind of reasoning uh, line with them. Uh, this student did this beautiful, like the, the style of the her slides, and she went further and got lots of pictures. So she was communicating her entire vision for the, C, the school that she wanted to have. And something, I was one of the, the evaluators from the research for the proposals for uh, rubric validation. And there's a very interesting trend going on that 80%, I get the chills, 80% of the students, they uh, mentioned and emphasized this aesthetics, like, I want my school to look nicer. I want people to come by and you know be attracted and see how cool this place is. I want people to feel good about being here. You know, you know. and also there is uh, other elements just like, uh, because it was a commercial thing, there are lots of parking lots. Some students even propose destroying a couple of parking lots and making green uh, areas, making like a, you know, and here, uh, planting more um, bigger and larger trees so it could buff the, the wind or the traffic noise pollution that comes from the Martin Luther King Drive that crosses the area. So it's beautiful, it's so beautiful. So this one was the proposal selected and look at this, two and a half pages of proposal, a ninth grader, it's like, this is the, the example because it was the winning, but that's what we want to. Oh, but yeah, what about the ones that don't achieve? We, that's our work. We work with them and see new strategies and we offer more support and we, that's life, right? But this is very uh, amazing. I love this project. So they also have presented their, their projects in the, uh, the school showcase of excellence and that is the superintendent of Allentown School uh, District. And this one is the example that I would like to share with you guys that this is not a, from our class. This is a 10th grade class this year in a civics and government class. And they were using ArcGIS that the ninth graders were learning. So this student learned with us last year and now in 10th grade in the civics and government, they investigated, so they investigated by themselves the relationship between uh, Allentown voters turned out. And like, there, I get the chills even in the hair, there are layers showing like in the blocks, the ethnicity of the population and the, the like, the, how, the, the median salary and education levels and they were cross comparing, overlaying the layers and then they make graphs. This is another tool from Esri which is beautiful, which is story maps. There are not mi millions of other presentations for, from us to talk about that. And they can present their finds telling a story, which is another skill that we are working with their students. Like, who is your audience? How can you tell a compelling story to sell and to showcase or to make your argumentation? Oh my God, I get so, <laughs> I love, I, I love being a teacher. So, uh, our implementation suggestion for you guys is start with the ecosystem scavenger hunt. This is a picture of like uh, 
uh, layer. If you click here in your presentation that you're going to download, it's going to take you to the Ecosystem Scavenger Hunt uh, page with all the instructions. And also, every uh, page has a tutorial uh, video. So uh, James, our colleague, he has narrated every step. So it serves as uh, instructional material for us teachers, for mentors who will be talk, uh, working with them if they don't know what to do or if it's their first time in a school. And also the teachers, because the teachers sometimes, uh, the students, hey, I want to say something, oh, let's use the, the, this, the board, the screen more. They can, instead of be talking, just like Junior is talking like for an hour, <laughs> they can put the video and like James is narrating, there's subtitles as well. So it's, there's many ways of doing that. Did I say everything about that? No. Oh, oh my God. So mentors, we look for mentors that like are related to STEM careers, just like I said earlier. They are, if they are comfortable uh, working with students, we screen them before. We like, it's not anyone that can go to school. There's also clearances, so they have to be aware of that. And they have to provide orientation about our like curriculum. It's not like they're gonna become teachers or teacher's assistants. It's just to manage kids and like be with them uh, when they are outside for safety reasons. Here it's a research from the Forest Service, uh, the Department of Agriculture, on the relationship between crime and tree canopy. And I would like to hear from your answers. Did you know or do you know about the relationship between crime and the tree canopy in a city before this presentation? Yes? Yes? No? 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 Neither did I. So we learn every day. That's beautiful in our jobs. Uh, the more trees there are, the less likely crime, crime will happen. So it's not only about making it more beautiful, making it like more environmentally you know, uh, compliant, but it has social, economical, political, everything, aspects involved with you know, maintaining and being sustainable and taking care of the environment. That's what SESI is about. Helping our students to build this uh, pro-environmental uh, ethos kind of mindset so they not only live a better oriented life, a happier life, but also are able to share, not only now, like in teenagehood, but when they become adults. Uh, explicitly modeling helped a lot uh, because we have like a very diverse classroom with lots of students, IP, ELLs. I like, I, 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 I don't speak Spanish, but I speak Portuguese from Brazil. I, I have never spoken Spanish so much in my entire life because some students don't speak in English and because it's a very Latin and Hispanic based community and then it was good for me as a researcher and a mentor to be also learning Spanish. Uh, and please do work with the school, your school uh, IT support because when they get to download the maps in class, it may be the case that the connection drops or it gets overloaded and then your workflow stops. So that, that we have some uh, suggestions as well in this site, like downloading chunks, like this group, download it now. When they are take, start downloading here. There are many strategies. And also, if there isn't, or like you, should, you would like to include something, send an email to us, because Dr. Bozin is always receiving, and he's very responsive, taking care of this curricula. The SESI one, that's our latest one that we're finishing now, and all the other ones, uh, energy, uh, climate change, and stuff. We have our presentation, our curriculum in this website that I shared with you. Teachers for downloading the instructional and the um, rubrics, everything that is like assessment and implementation wise, you have to log in with this Eli teacher and the password is 87BJA92. Uh, the presentation is available there as well. And here is information about ESRI. If you didn't know yet, go home and do it. It's amazing. They have so many cool tools for education, G uh, GIS, geospatial reasoning, mapping, storytelling. And I, I'm preparing a curriculum for my dissertation using storytelling now. So, yeah. Thank you so much, get in touch, and I hope you have learned a little or you know, get as excited as I got with this work because I love how kids learn and become you know, more 
oriented to living a better life. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, I have another presentation if you want. Here, I'm sorry. Building and teaching with immersive VR today at 3.30, 4.30, uh, Empire D. Another research that we started, and now this is my research because it's going to be my dissertation. We are uh, developing immersive virtual reality learning environments because we want teachers to stop using Facebook and watching people play on YouTube and play with us in the curriculum. Okay. Thank you. So I'm going to be making it available right now in the website so you guys can download it. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there, there, there a link next that, 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 like that group did around that school? Is like when they're finished with that project, are you going to another area with the group? Or? Oh, this I cannot answer that, but Dr. Bodzin can because okay. he's the PI. What I've heard so far is that they are trying to apply to a smart. There is another kind of grant okay. spread spread grant which is like you do your work in other states so you can okay. try and run the data to see if you get the same results but now that we are finishing we are we have been disseminating for three years so the more people get to contact us and get interested the, the more likely is going to be for other places to be implementing as well 